Welcome back to another episode of Real Talk, episode number 13. How's it going, co-host? How's everything? Great. <laughs> this guy, man, he loves to interact, man. You can tell he's just... He just loves this, man. He loves doing these 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 videos, and he loves interacting uh, and breaking down the word of God. Um, so we made it to 13, 13 episodes, man. And uh, yo, let's talk about something for real, for real. <laughs> wow, this guy. Yo, what's up with this information? This stuff. This. How do people jump ship? What do you mean jump ship? Like, how do you jump out of Christianity proper and start talking like you're a Hebrew Israelite? <laughs> this guy here. I'm just disturbed. I'm disturbed. I, I'm tired of people. I'm tired of people thinking that there's something wrong with Christianity proper. There's something wrong with the Bible. And so they're going to they're going to start following something that was created Many, 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 many years later, documented as later. Well, well, let me give you some pushback on that, Steve. There, there are some people who Black Hebrew Israelite uh, BHI movement, as you want to call it. it it's vast. It's almost like uh, Christianity in, in the sense of no, denominations. No, no, no. It, let me let me talk. In yeah, the sense of denominations you, and forms. I'm, I'm 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 ready. That's great. You you I'm, have people. This is real talk. I'm about to get blistery raw right now. <laughs> you have people who are on the street corners that we see, and they're basically like, if you're not part of the twelve tribes, and if you're white, uh, <laughs> it's a wrap yep. uh, for you. Um, but then you have what they so call the moderates, who are like, no, we don't believe in that. We believe that Christ is the savior mm -hmm. of the world, Yeshua Hamashiach. Um. And so those people would actually say that they are Christians because to them, by definition, Christian is a follower of Christ and they follow the righteousness of Christ. If he says, love thy enemies, he loves thy enemies. If he, if, if they see him, you know, David Koresh says he was a follower of Christ. Charles Manson said he was a follower of Christ. No. Jim Jones says he was a follower of Christ. I'm I just mean, I'm just saying for for you to say that bring it br jumping bring it out of Christianity. I'm yeah. saying they they wouldn't say that they jumped out of uh, Christianity proper. They would actually challenge your Christianity as if it if it is uh, orthodoxy or 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 mm -hmm. not. So that's why I'm bringing clarification that they would say like, no, this is Christianity proper. Continue to follow everything that's the uh, four hundred some plus laws. Um, those never went away, and so. But I think there's something deeper going on. So, for somebody to jump ship, who has been repping biblical Christianity, and somewhere's within their shield of faith, a fiery dart pierced them, penetrated them, and begins to manifest new logic or reason. There had been something wrong from the, there's something, something else transpired or there was something wrong with their line of reasoning that they covered up for many years, maybe. Maybe they have been covering up some insecurities that they never allow people to see. And they feel like Christianity proper, biblical Christianity didn't have the answer for it. And so therefore they allow somebody to feed their mind more propaganda of some kind of pseudo Christian philosophy that does not fit coherently to biblical Christianity. And I want to, I, like, those things need to be called out and challenged. I mean, and then and then being a part of, and I'm going to just be honest with you, we're talking about a hip-hop artist, a Christian hip-hop artist who's jumped ship from biblical Christianity to calling himself a black Israelite. And the thing about it is CAH, which is, you know, uh, Christian hip-hop, are going to still tolerate him. They're still going to allow him to rock on scene as if he's still repping biblical Christ, and he's not. And and I'm calling them out too. I'm calling CC, CCH out or CHA, CHH out, Christian Hip Hop. I'm calling them out. Well, he actually did get backlash, and he had to do videos to make the, the statement clear that he does believe that Christ died for his sins and that he doesn't 
uh, never has forsaken the gospel at all. So I think how is it what that you're addressing, you need to go a little deeper because so on the so surface level, uh, of course, you always have to you always have to dig deeper to c- clarify what somebody's actually believing in, right? Yeah. Be- because I could ask you a question right now and say, could a person say that they are an Israelite and still follow the scriptures and still uh, lay hold to the claim of the gospel and lay hold to the, the deity of Christ? If I was going to come out and do what you just said, come out and say, I'm an Israelite. Because I am involved in what's going on in culture and in society, I would have to understand that when I make that declaration, I'm attaching myself to a brand. And if I'm attaching myself to a brand, I know currently that brand has some stigmas to it, correct? Correct. So if I'm going to now tag myself with that brand, I also understand that I'm going to be associated with those stigmas that if you don't want somebody to tag me with those stigmas, I need to come out and declare what I am referencing when it comes to describing myself as that brand. So if I'm describing myself as that brand, I need to make sure that I'm clarifying. But then again, if you do that, would you really be an Israelite? Would you be an Israelite by definition to many of those who are subscribing themselves as Israelites to today's branding of an Israelite? Because then you would be making up a whole nother sect of the black Hebrew Israelite. Right. So what do you do with that set? That why would you do that then? If you know you have to go through all of that, why would you do that in the first place? Why not just address the issues that biblical Christianity you feel is not challenging or is not presenting properly and declare that? Declare what it is you want to be represented and understood. Don't call yourself by a whole nother brand because now you're going to be tagged with all the stigmas that go with that brand. So then you're going to have to absorb all of the criticism, absorb all of the misunderstandings that go with the stigma of that brand. Why do that? Now you're literally taken away from the main focus of what you thought you wanted to represent in your new enlightenment. Okay, so that last piece is is good and and I want to and I want to end up addressing that piece by taking the focus off of. But I want to go back and and state that the person who 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 wants to take on all of that, who wants to be a part of the BHI movement, would just say that there's a lot of things that have been tainted the same way there's a lot of things that have been tainted with Christianity. Uh so uh, we'll still bear the burdens will still bear the things that people say about Christians and we would still try to find ways to enlighten people and correct them on things that are that are wrong if they'll say things like yeah Christians always look at how they treat uh people who are not believers look at how they're always judging we'll go through and walk them through like listen if you mean judging by condemnation that is wrong but if you mean making a righteous judgment to say something is wrong... Make a separation of truth and error, right, right and wrong, yes. So what I'm saying is, for them, the, the reason they're going to take all that on is because they believe, truthfully, that they are Israelites and that they should stick and stay clear to these laws and commandments like like all of them. But I do think, to your point, though... I don't know what it is that you're really trying to address by making that statement because the gospel is no longer at the forefront anymore. Whereas Christianity proper uh, or, or orthodoxy, we always know that that's at the forefront. If was, if some other issues ain't at the forefront that should be in, in our current society, we do know that one thing about Christianity, the gospel and the message of salvation is always there. But when you identify um, as a Hebrew Israelite, generally speaking, the focus tends to be on your nationality or uh, your your uh, ethnic group or, or, you know, what you're laying claim spiritually. And now that focus then goes off to trying to figure out what tribe you're a part of, how do you even know you're a part of this tribe. It and then the gospel gets thrown in there some way later. And that to me is the problem. I haven't heard somebody in BHI movement really 
where I see the gospel at the forefront, I've always seen BHI movement have the law at the forefront. Mm -hmm. And I'm not dogging the law because we know it's righteous and godly, but I'm just saying the gospel takes a back seat uh, where I don't see it taking a back seat in Christianity. Okay, so again, think about what I stated earlier. I stated earlier, what is the purpose of you jumping ship and tagging yourself to a name yes. with a stigma when if it's an issue you have, present the issue, dialogue the issue, don't, atta don't attach yourself to a brand with all of its stigmas because you are now, like I said, absorbing all of this, uh, 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 you're absorbing all of the attention on the stigmas and ironing that out, then the real purpose for why you have a problem with maybe something in Christianity that's not being defended as clear as it should be defended. An example, if you feel that modern day preachers, evangelists, whoever is not properly defending Christology, then deal with Christology. Don't flip the script, go to be, um, uh, black Hebrew Israelite, and now all of a sudden you know Christology. Just deal with Christology. Don't put a brand to it. Don't attach yourself to a brand to say, oh, I now understand Christology, meaning the deity of Christ, divine nature. I just want your listeners, your audience to know. No, I, I, I don't know if the listeners may say Christology instead of Christology. So you said it like three or four times, but go ahead. Christology, Christology, <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> go, DNA, go ahead. It's red, right? Juicy. It's a... Anyway, focus. Go ahead. I'm just saying, um, people would want to deal with that. Deal with it. If you want to wrangle, if you want to get into a, a dialogue, a discussion, and go through scripture to bring out scripture that deal with his divine nature and his human nature and dialogue that he is not a created being, he is an eternal being, let's go through the scripture and deal with that. But don't go around and now claim, I mean, you're literally, this person and people like him are going around now bragging about the brand, elevating the brand, rather than just dialoguing and really getting into the real fundamental issues of Christianity proper. Go through that. Don't have, you don't have to change up. It's like me deciding to go from being a Pentecostal to a Baptist. It's like, what are you doing? There's something else going on inside your mind rather than when people ask me, what is your denomination? I let them know I'm a, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. That's what I am. I'm not going to uh, attach myself to something, some name brand, as if that makes my identity better. I want you to understand my mindset, what I'm devoted to, is the biblical references of Christianity. And if we have to dive in, we're diving in. We're going to dialogue. We're going to discuss the issues. Surface those issues. Deal with it. But I think that a lot of times... People have a uh, an insecurity that they've never really dealt with, and maybe they didn't come along to a preacher who is willing to walk them through and work through those insecurities about what they've learned regarding biblical Christianity. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So you feel in regards to BHI movement that there's just a lack of doctrinal things, and now because someone is presenting better information that they that they're now jumping ship to this whole uh, ideology because there's so many verses and there's so many uh so much history that they weren't getting from other issues because i know you start off addressing uh the deity of christ but it seems like that's like secondary in a sense that that the secondary to who to uh, people who identify as being Israelites uh, and why they went to being Israelites. But people who weren't like brought up in that. Yeah. Um, so for people who, who start off in Christianity, whatever you was, um, and then you, you're jumping ship now to, uh, you know, uh, black Hebrew Israelite uh, ism, if that's the word. Uh, it seems like the number one issue that I've seen, and obviously you would need somebody here who yeah. was to, to qualify that more, has is secondary with Christ and, and, and his deity, with, but more so with the identity piece of black, of African Americans in general. There's a lost history of who we are as people. And 
I that to me has has always been the primary piece of so, BHI, not Jews or not being a uh, Israelite, but BHI. The the pull has always been what has happened to the black race, and that okay, this is what happened. The Bible explains what has happened. You're talking about like the 400 years how they use the curse and all. Yeah, of those or, things. or or just being scattered. Even if they don't use the 400 years piece, they'll use some other verses where lost sheep scattered in mm-hmm. different places. Mm-hmm. So the primary piece that I've always seen from BHI is identity with the history of black people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so from there, which Christianity does not address or, uh, there, I mean, good Lord, we, we, we have to wait. Are you saying that Christianity should address that? I'm saying that when you don't address immoral things that have happened to people, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. But you can scientifically bring out how abortions are wrong. I get all that line of reasoning. So what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that we should be going around here trying to prove who's what, who's Mm -hmm. an Israelite, or that we should focus all our energy on trying to get you to see the history of who you are. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is is that when you recognize and and you're able to see what's going on in the country and what's been going on for 400 plus years, and you try to remove that, and you have these people who are now in this country that you've treated this way for so long— and your only answers to this group of people is, don't worry, store up your treasures in, yeah, in, in yeah, heaven. Yeah. When you do that, you create this animosity. And now towards things, Christianity proper. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you also have intelligent people who may not be as spiritual, but you have intelligent people, uh, part of the nation of Islam, who can go in and spill off all these statistics and things, and things start to look presented better. And now, boom. Here you are. I mean, identity is always going to be a part of who we are, no matter what. There are people who are Christians who are who are Italian and they and they love it. They're yeah, Irish and they. I, I, and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not. I, I'm agreeing with all of the celebration of ethnicity. I think we should. I think that. But anytime uh, black a, people get celebrated, it, it's an issue. It's like, why are you doing? No, this? no, I get that. I get all of that. I, I. So your point is that the premise of most black Hebrew Israelites. BHI is that they're disgruntled because Christianity or the face of Christianity in America, which is predominantly white, that's who predominantly represents Christianity in America. Mm-hmm. They don't preserve they don't provide a narrative of recognizing the celebration of ethnicities all over. Pe- and- yeah, period. Or even to look at the Bible and see Africa being right, mentioned, right, 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 right. the Ethiopian eunuch. Right, right, right. The celebration of, like I said, the celebration yes, of these ethnicities. Yes. All of God's creation equally created. But I just wanted to bring in the point of Bible because I don't want people thinking like, well, see, now you're getting off of Scripture. No, I'm saying there are actual places in Scripture where it talks about Egypt. It talks about the Ethiopian eunuch. And yet we're looking up at with movies and pictures of somebody with some blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah. At some point, when somebody starts to challenge you on those things... One or two things happened. Either you cling closer to God, like, Lord, help me to love in the midst of this and help me to understand and present a clearer image of your gospel and why uh, it is important of ethnicity in the body of Christ, because Mm -hmm. you set it up, not because of my own thing. Or I say, yeah, that is right. Why why aren't they doing that? And then I start paying attention to more and more of that. And I start paying attention more and more of that. And eventually I get to the point where great information but I'm no longer pushing the gospel in the forefront. Okay, so now, so that so that point right there that you brought out, the whole line of reasoning that you just addressed, right? Right. That leads me to then think again that there's something, the narrative of that individual within, even when they were walking biblically, there's still a narrative within them that's struggling. There's an insecurity about the ideology of their, their idea of Christianity, even though on the service they're repping Christ, they're talking about Jesus saves, they're talking about all of this other stuff, but internally something still seems to be a form of insecurity that's being chipped away at. So now when you start talking about the narratives of the black race and the oppressions and so on, it starts to dig a little bit deeper into that insecurity. That's what I'm talking about. And that's why me personally, I feel it is so important how 
teaching and leadership are held accountable to proper teaching and addressing the 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 content of scripture and then addressing the the christianity that's being portrayed by the dominant race in america that you're now covering the true biblical beauty of god's creation when you're not identifying equality in everything with all races with all ethnicity all ethnicities you follow what i'm saying mm -hmm. you sure i'm sure do you want to repeat your statement no, I again i don't want to repeat my statement again i'm just I, i'm just bringing out the reality so let me ask you this I then. just I'm, I, I'm, because i i i actually want to give you some pushback here on real talk talk to me push, push. i don't always believe that you know how you talk about how there's a there's an insecurity there or something always brewing? Yep. Um, and maybe we may get to the same street, but a different path that we may take. Because I'm, I believe there could be a person who's following the scriptures, not even thinking anything about that. Mm -hmm. You know, praising God, focusing on the gospel message heavy. And then they see things happening in the world. And over a course of time, not getting any clear answers on things, not getting uh, doctrinal support on how to deal with seeing these things happen, then it begins to pull at you to go a certain way with the better information. But you're saying there has to be something down in there. What I'm saying is, what if the person had nothing there, they're just trying to learn about God, but outside causes allow their attention to look at something something in the media something in the news you look at police you look at whatever the case may be they weren't thinking about that they they didn't have any but now they see that taking place and then they start they, they hit up their pastor who normally they never have any conversations with about and they're like hey man what do you just like three or four of these like murders taking place what do you think's going on and then the pastor says something like yeah i think we're just focusing too much on see that's why i don't get into that race stuff and and then like it's like Okay, boom. Something that was never there before. But it seems like you're saying, no, something had to already be there. And that just woke something up. Whereas I don't see that. I just think that there could be something outside of an individual. Uh, maybe what you're saying primarily may be the case. But sometimes it could just be some outside information. I, people were not looking to see what happened to Ahmaud Arbery and what happened to George Floyd. And, and how, it's how it stirred things up to get people more looking at things when they should have been looking before what do you what do you do with people like that you're, you're gonna say that they were always insecure of things so i'm gonna stick to my guns i'm gonna push back okay and i believe that if somebody is is developing spiritual man, spiritual wisdom from the content of scripture i believe that the evidence of god's glory and god's wisdom is going to continue to manifest i am not saying that they won't be triggered emotionally about the inconsistencies. I'm not saying that. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is when they're triggered emotionally because of the inconsistencies in society, the foundation is still going to be solid enough to bring them to the center point of purpose, the center point of the gospel. Not saying that just preaching the gospel will cause that stuff to go away. No, my reference point will always be the gospel, and then I know how to approach those inconsistencies with a biblical understanding. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? Right. And therefore, that's why I'm saying to deviate from that, there had to be something present. I'm not saying it was a like, like gnawing at them every single day, but it was present. There were, may have been some things before they got saved that they had always had about some form of identity with racial inequalities going on in america you could still have those thoughts never really gave it much attention but never addressed them either and never allowed the word of god to speak to your whole heart that when the word of god is speaking to your whole heart it covers your thoughts about the in uh the injustices that might be taking place with your ethnicity or with a group of people you, you with me yeah i agree with that so Peace. growing you can still have your mind enlarged to loving God, worshiping God, not responding too heavily into the injustices, but something is always there. The problem is the word of God that you're willing to listen to, the word is going to speak to your whole heart in balances of all things 
you're you're engaged in in society and so eventually that part of you is going to be addressed maybe you didn't take it serious enough maybe you thought to yourself oh that's not serious i want to think about this i'm trying to grow my my giftedness i'm trying to do better as a father or a, a mother or a sister or a brother but you're never really paying attention to this thing over here that is some form of insecurity nothing serious nothing damaging nothing real problematic but it's never a lot you're never allowing the whole word of god to address your whole heart you you with me therefore i say over time those issues that you are seeing then the 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 messages you're hearing from other people start affecting your mindset regarding biblical christianity now you're da- now you're you're um questioning the very essence of biblical christianity based off of moral issues that are going on i just feel like that christianity that you developed was kind of weak in essence uh okay okay so a lot of good things that i agree with okay i don't agree with the end conclusion that it was weak but i do i'm saying the their their the christianity that they've been building themselves on is weak I would, I think you're not giving a lot of credit to the demographics and who, we, we have to be honest on, on, on certain things, right? And demographic. Wait, where are we going with this honesty? Because you might on, just honest, open up a whole number. No, no, no. I'm going to stay focused on the, the, the jumping ship yep. and, and, and the issue being there. And the root of that. Yes. Not just so much, but there's something buried there. Yes. yes. Yeah. And, and, and getting that check. The reality is this, okay, um, honesty, when you look at demographics, right, we look at 60, 60% being white, 13% being black. From that, we know most of the black churches, right? Um, a lot of people, it's it's a lot of charismatic Pentecostalism. In or black churches. Yes, yes. and mm-hmm. not all. There are mm-hmm. some very sound theologians, black theologian brothers. Um, CCA. <laughs> there, 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 are, there are a lot. There are a lot that I that I that I see that I pay attention to and, and that I rock with. But a lot of people are just used to visually what they see. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you 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 see the things on TBN. You see the naming and claimants. You you see people getting jets. You see people in, in, in Texas yeah. and different places. Okay, yeah. you see the pastors of LA or pastors of wherever. I'm just telling you, this is what they see. These are black men who are pastors, who are bishops. This is what they see. Terrible doctrine, okay? We, we, we went from one place where people couldn't give you a verse for why they believe something. Now they give you a verse of why they believe something, and Make it's distorted. Sure you tell people what you mean, that, that the, the individual is coming from a place where they can't give you a verse. Yes. And now you go to somebody like a black Hebrew Israelite who knows their Bible. No, no, no. I'm not even saying that. I'm saying you come from. That's let's what I'm say, saying. You come from. Let's say you come from a ba- a, a worse off yep. okay, place where a Pentecostal place where yep. it's, it's bad. They can't even. Uh, an older pastor, they can't provide you with a verse. Yep. Then you go to this charismatic brother who he's like, no, oh. turn right there to Proverbs 18, 21. So now they're providing you verses. And the person's saying. Look, see, they even got the verses for me. See, as long as they got the verses, I always back up things with verses. Now they're not, they elevated off of not just accepting something without a verse, but not no proper interpretation. Now, follow me. When you come from that and you get out of that, and then you go to this different type of like theology where you're actually talking about hermeneutics and exegesis and all that stuff, right? Those things do get dismissed in regards to the racial issues that are going on. We, as black people and as believers, that never got checked because there never was a point in time for it to be checked. When when was it a time to for it to be checked? Like for for us to really work through the thoughts of the evils that was going on, at least in this gen, after King's generation. Mm-hmm. When did they have the time to really do that? You look at churches, you say it just like King says it. It's the most segregated time. So while you bring up the 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 issue of it went unchecked, it went unnoticed, and you know you weren't thinking about it, yes, I would say that for dang near all bl- uh, black people in the faith because when was there a time to focus on it? Once we finally got off of certain bad doctrine, it wasn't on our minds to go back and think about like these moral issues. It was... Man, we're finally getting gospel. We're, we're finally working on meat. Now let's go up to some 
eschatology and all these we find you know we're going up in all this theology we never really got back to okay the racial issues what's going on in your community how are these things impacting but then you do hear it from the nation of islam and then you do hear it for black hebrew israelite and then these people get elevated once things are happening in the country explicitly when nothing explicitly and when, and I say explicitly, I mean like you see something—a murder, yeah, a lynching. The flo the Floyd. Because because the, there's uh, definitely Aubrey. things always happening. Right. They start to rise up again when nothing is like that happening. None of these groups, no offense, they don't get any attention or matter. It's when things are raising up and the church doesn't have an answer for what's going on, then people start to look into these these Other people. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is we never had the chance to address these things. Now here we are, 2020, 2021, or let's go back to even Trayvon. Things are starting to go on where we're like, yeah, what's going on? Nobody is addressing these things. And and what we're being told from churches is you need to focus on the gospel. You need to da-da-da. So I actually agree with you in the sense, but I don't believe that that's our Christianity being weak. I just think that b believers as a whole, black believers as a whole, had to work through a lot of things educational-wise from theology and then still trying to deal with how a country is treating them. How do you work through all of that? So that's what I was saying. And you're saying that the, you said it's weak. That individual's Christianity was weak. Like they built themselves up on a weak premise of Christianity. I believe Christianity is the strongest philosophy you can have on the face of this earth. And it can address any moral context that's going on in the world right now. It has the answer. And I can address that. But what I'm saying is that in the individual they themselves built themselves up in a weak form of Christianity because their mentals was only looking for certain things out of Christianity. And I have to throw this in here. Okay. When you are an entertainer with the gospel, I think a lot of times your attention to detail, biblical detail, unless you're really, really like devoted to um, enunciating scriptures and enunciating all of the content and going through it thoroughly unless you're a real devoted person like that the average entertainer to me isn't looking to represent jesus christ in his fullness to represent the good things about jesus christ for people to you know be entertained and therefore when your mindset is like that i feel like a lot of the christianity you you possess is weak it it, it has weak support systems to it if you get what i'm saying i get what you're saying so the so again this person that we're talking about is an entertainer right so i feel like a lot of that stuff was hidden and not addressed and it was always there and it was uh either suspicions or insecurities that over time kept growing and as he was entertaining he didn't want an individual doesn't want their name to be blemished because entertaining brings income entertaining brings popularity entertaining brings you know their source of, of 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 living so the fear of having that affected continues to move them forward not addressing their insecurity or their suspicions about the challenges they have with christianity in certain areas um i want to pick i i, I we, we have to we turn this into an episode two yeah. no 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 we, we have to go into the second part because we can't leave the listener without an understanding of how to work through the insecure or the identity piece. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I'm sorry, I, I respect you. I respect everything that you're presenting here. But when it comes to the issue of the gospel, Christians break down it and, and, and understand that no problem. But how to address Christian living when you are an oppressed person, but but your brother isn't oppressed or, or doesn't have to deal with the benefits of that. The church seems to have no clue, no answer. And it's just like, not trying to be funny, but you just got to be tougher than that. And it's like, is that really the is that really the answer here or or do or should we recognize and understand what's going on and be more methodical on addressing the identity piece. And I think we should pick that up 
not so much of just BHI, but whatever. People leave and go to Islam. Yeah. People leave or, and go to Jehovah's Witness. Whatever. People whatever leave and go be. atheists. Yeah, whatever. Or, yeah, straight up atheism. Atheism. Is that a word? Atheism. This guy here. We're going to pick up. <laughs> Is that a word? Did I make up a word? Atheism. Atheism. That's yeah, what but you like atheism. <laughs> like you added an N or something to it. <laughs> Listen, this was completely real talk. This was definitely not in the subject matter, but that's okay because episode 14, we're going to pick back up in addressing some insecurities or, or identity things that just pop up. You, you didn't, you weren't aware that they was there. But because of whether it's go- things going on in society, something happening in work, boom, it's there now. And what do you do? Do you five months down the road say, you know what, Christianity ain't for me. Do you say, you know what, no, God, I'm going to stay in this and I'm going to rock with this, but I'm going to find better answers according to the faith. What do you do? Do you lean into your own understanding? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out in episode 14. Anything else you would like to say? I'm ready. Let's get it. All right. Episode 14. Be ready for it.